So on November 3rd, 2013, I was at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York for their monthly Netrunner tournament. Pretty awesome tournament. Great prizes, great crowd, great store. I keep going. There I go, flipping my coin off the edge of the table. Uh, played a lot of good Netrunner games there. We did four rounds of Swiss. Uh, I don't have enough batteries in my camera to record all four rounds, but I'm glad I record this round because woo-wee, this is the round of rounds. I haven't played two Netrunner games this good in a while. So here's the first game I'm running. Fedor is corping. Fedor is a really good player. I think he won the New York uh, Regionals. Uh, I played him once before at another later tournament, I think a month ago. Always a blast to play against him. Good times. Something else I want to mention in this game. Uh, there was, I confirmed it by watching this tape, obviously. There was a part where I cheated. <laughs> it wasn't an intentional cheat. It wasn't a game-changing cheat. But it was a cheat. There was a turn where I took six clicks instead of four. And the reason is because I didn't use my click counters. See, I have them there, the four little red guys. I move them off of the card when I spend them, and I move them back onto the identity when my turn is over. And that turn, I just happen to take two clicks at the beginning without moving the counters, and because it was a turn where he was making me nervous, uh, well, you'll see when it happens. Usually what I do, and you know, he caught it too. It wasn't, you know, uh, he was absolutely right. I was wrong. Um, it just, my brain was all messed up. I didn't realize. Usually, my policy is if, you know, there's ever a question, I will always do what is disadvantageous to me, so that there is no question. Um, you know, but in this case, I just, I forgot that rule. It happens. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone in our community is really evil trying to cheat maliciously. You know, mistakes are made. And if people make big mistakes, there have been games where people access too many cards or saw cards they shouldn't have seen. And, you know, in those cases, the, the proper thing to do is to just, you know, forfeit the round uh, or something like that. But, you know, people are pretty cool. Uh, you know, I would forgive my opponent the same. Right? So, we got on the left, Wayland. Scorchy, scorchy Wayland. And on the right, me, Kate. Gonna just go aggressive right away. Ice Wall, Shadow. Well, I got a link. He gets two credits. He's not boosting the trace. I'll pay two so I don't get tagged. That way I save a click. I'm gonna pay two for the tag anyway, and I see nothing. Or at least whatever it was, is I couldn't see it on tape. Two clicks left. One of them, I probably want to install something to make use of my ability. But I'll draw a card, because who knows, maybe that's the thing I want to install. Nope, clone chip for free. Hey, yo, clone chip for free. Okay. Your turn, Mr. Scorched Earth. Oh man, this is way more interesting now, watching this afterwards. Uh, I can see what's in his hand, and it gives me a whole new insight into what happened in this game. So, it gives me the house to take over. It gives me a bad pub, which I use a lot, right? Thank you for that bad pub right away. I know you wanted the money, but... Ah, oh, that bad pub makes me feel so good. I'm going to use the hell out of it. Uh, but first, I'm going to draw a bunch of cards and freelance. We're both getting big money. Uh, okay, so I took eight. So I think I did draw, draw, freelance. And I have a click left. No, I don't. Freelance is my last click. I did draw, 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 freelance. Yeah, my deck, the way it works is I freelance all these programs in the trash um, so that I have every program in the universe. I'm going to infiltrate that. Jackson Howard, good. I didn't waste my time running that this turn. Um... Get big money, you know, get a burst of economy, a big one. That's way bigger than the burst you're going to get from a hedge fund. It also helps putting things in the trash, so it's the ultimate tutor, right? I have every program known to man. I've got self-modifying code also, so I can get any program I want. By drawing with quality time and diesel, you're going to get clone chips. You're going to get, you know, everything else that you need. Uh, that you, It's not a program. Dex mostly pro. I think it's like half programs, 20-something, 19 or 20 programs. 
And I have every program for every occasion. So no matter what the other guy's playing, I have something to deal with it. You know, and I wanted to be really aggressive there, but luckily, my, you know, I got an infiltration. So I was able to uh, see that it's Jackson Howard, no need to run. I have been following a policy of trying to force people to use Jackson Howard early rather than letting them load up their archives with the perfect three things to, to put back into the R&D. But in this case, um, you know, it's almost a reprieve, right? It's like, okay, I can just go and get my Plascrete with this quality time. I didn't want to install the plan. <laughs> it's like I got the plastic with quality time, and I like just sort of wanted to do something else with the turn, uh, and just keep building my rig. But once I saw the plastic, I'm like, well, I guess I have to install this. <laughs> I can't not install it, right? And I have to be very careful about how much money I have, and when I make successful runs. I cannot make a successful run on a turn. If I end that turn with less than four cards in my hand, or if you also got to make sure that he has a number of credits less than the number of credits I have, plus eight. Oh, well, plus nine, because I have a link. Right. This is a whole game of just dodge the scorch. So any of you players out there that get scorched a lot, take this game as an example of uh, ways to scorch and ways to dodge scorches. Man, looking at his hand now, I can see he's got the snare in there. He's definitely going for the snare, you know, the snare scorch for sure. And the thing is, snare scorch is a great way to get people who have Plascrete installed. Because they run, right? They have five cards in their hand. Even if they run on click three instead of four. Well, if they run on click three instead of four, they can remove the tag from the, the snare. So it's not too bad. But, you know, if they run on click four, which, you know, normally against Jinteki, you won't do that. But against Whalen, you might. And then you get snared. You now lost three cards from your hand, and you got tagged. So... You have two cards in your hand, and you're already tagged. They just play double scourge, six credits. The Plascrete won't save you, right? And that is the power of the snare scourge. So he has an interesting play style here in this game, where he's not installing a lot of ice, because by installing ice, I could make him res it, you know? Or at least, you know, he might be tempted to res it. And then, um, you know, he would go low on money. If he goes low on money, he can't see source me. He can't set off a snare. He can't scorch me, right? He's just keeping his money. And if I get in, even a little bit of ice will make me spend money, right? There's that shadow on R&D. And if I try to run r and I'm going to spend money removing tags. I'm going to spend, right, spend clicks. That'll seriously drain me, which is why I haven't really run r and Okay, so he installed something in the remote. I'm going to get it. He's checking my uh, heap. And he sees a Deus Ex in there. And he sees I have a clone ship, right? So we know he installed a snare now, but I didn't know. And here's the thing with that. The Deus Ex could have avoided the snare damage. Um, but I wasn't even thinking about that. right? And by the once you get hit by the snare, it's too late to go get the Deus Ex. There's no more paid ability window. I would have had to use the clone chip to get the Deus Ex before uh, accessing there. right? During one of the, the, during the run paid ability windows. But that's fine. Because I had two clicks left. So I drew a card and removed the tag. And I was, you know, I didn't really mind cards going in the trash. I kind of wanted that membership, but, um, you know, I'm putting cards in the trash any with my freelancing, so you want to put more in there. Yeah, Dancing Plascrete. What? 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 Yeah, what? So I thought. Now, normally, this deck, you know, just doesn't have any resources, so I could play it as a tag me deck. But yeah, it, it, there's a point at which it's like, okay, if, if, if I've just got a couple tags, one, 
It's like from a snare, it's like, oh, we'll play it safe. Just remove the tag. It's like clicking two credits. If you have the clicking two credits to spare, why take the risk of doing the tag me? He could be, you know, splashing a closed account. So it's only one influence, right? And people are doing that because of tag me's. But in the case where I say get buried by a midseason, right? I'll be like, okay, fine. I'll take the tags. All your data ravens mean nothing to me now, right? I'm just going to, you know, just run, 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 run. Yeah, the other reason I don't run already is I'm going to give him the two credits from the shadow. <laughs> okay, so but I'll run HQ, because running HQ is now free, right? I got my corroder in order to run the remote before. Um, and now I have a bad pub, and there's only an ice wall on HQ. So I get free HQ runs, and I have a plascrete. So I'm not afraid of getting scorched. But I was afraid of Archer on that remote, which is why I did not run it. And, well... And, you know, it's like, well, I have a clone ship. I could have gone and got something to deal with the Archer. Well, I didn't have enough money to get something to deal with the Archer, right? I couldn't bring out a... I couldn't afford to bring a Femme out of there or anything like that and pay four credits. So I, I, I just had to pretend that he had a hostel and he had money. So I had to pretend that that ice was Archer. I didn't want to get hit by Archer. So I didn't run the remote. I let him get a government contract, and I'm just going to run HQ instead. As long as I have Plaskreet. I feel okay running, as long as I have four cards in my hand, four or five. And if I got a free run on HQ, I'm going to go check it out. I want to see what's in there. Hedge funds. <laughs> it's a typical Wayland cards right, are the ones that I see. Ooh, you can see there's a hostel in his hand. How come I couldn't draw that? Huh? How come I couldn't draw that? All right, so I'm going to Parasite the Shadow. I drew the parasite. I don't have to use, you know, and then, it's like, why did I parasite the shadow? Well, it'll go down in one shot, right? It's, it's guaranteed to work. Uh, it's cheaper than going to install some mimic or something like that. And I don't have to use a clone ship. I just happen to have drawn the parasite. Why did I save my parasite for like an archer or something? Well, maybe I will. Uh, but I can just clone ship that parasite back out if I need it later. So, in fact, playing the Parasite is a way of putting it in the trash, right? Freelancing is one way, overdrawing is another way, but this way I actually get to use the Parasite, and then I can get it back if I need it. So, that's definitely the way to go. Okay, so now I got free R&D runs thanks to the Parasite. Got a Plaskreet, got cards in hand, not afraid. He's only got five credits, not afraid. Can't scorch me now. Can't scorch me now. But I am afraid of the archer in that remote, which is why I'm not running there. Because he's got, well, five credits. That's the power of the government contracts, which is why I just played Stimhack. See? Stimhack means, with the clone ship, if that is archer, I now can deal with it. So I do go into the remote with my Stimhack. Um, I pay to break the wall of static. He does not res. Score an Atlas, yeah, but uh, I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't get to use my Stimhack credits with my clone chip, right? He was basically like, don't res, right? To make me, you know, take a brain damage for no reason. Well, I'm deciding whether to use those Stimhack credits to get Magnum Opus or Femme, right? It's like, getting a Magnum Opus out for free is kind of nice, but I kind of don't want to waste the Stimhack credits, right? I'm going to get the Femme out. So between the bad pub and my ability and nine Stimhack credits, yeah, it, it basically cost me nothing to get Femme. I wish I had a second clone ship. Then I could have brought out two things. Sadly, I didn't have a second clone ship. So use my Stimhack credits to get Le Femme onto the table. And I'm going to Femme the only ice that could possibly be an archer. <laughs> right? That one. <laughs> um... Taking my brain damage. Lost a test run. And the thing with the brain damage is immediately I forget. <laughs> it's like I just took a brain damage, but I forgot I had it. So here I draw up to five and discard one. He's like, oh, you, yeah, there's your brain, and discard down, yep. All right, so I threw out the scavenge. That was actually dumb. I should have thought about that more. I had a scavenge in my hand, which I think is the reason I got rid of the second one, but two scavenges, the only two scavenges in my deck. And I have a femme on the table, which I really like to scavenge around. 
uh, to different places. So I probably could have thrown a program out instead, something that I could have gotten back later. So we got a new ice in R&D. That's the end of my free R&D runs. Um, and I'm, now I'm still afraid of Archer, right? Because even if there's an Archer on the remote, it's like, well, there's nothing in the remote. But what if the Archer's an R&D now? Okay, well, he can definitely res it. And I'd lose my FEM that was so expensive. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's altogether not good. So I'm going to take my free HQ runs. I'm still not afraid of running because I have a Plasgree and I have cards in hand. So even though there's enough money to see Sora's double scorch, it's like, whatever. Uh, it's a scorched earth. At this point, I don't even know if he has the sea source in hand. I guess we can try to look at his hand in the video, but I didn't know he had it. Uh, or I said, I didn't, you know, I wasn't totally sure he had it. He might not even have it. So that's that was also part of the HQ run, right? That was making me less afraid was the fact that I had not seen the sea source. Um, also, the fact that that scorched earth was signed. Uh, sort of told me like, hey, maybe uh, I'm seeing the same Scorch over and again. He might only have one Scorch in there. Oh boy, so he's getting rid of my Fem Dice, putting on a new one. Well, <laughs> making me scared to run the remote again. Look at his strategy of, of not resing ice, right? Okay, it's Memchip. Now I can install more things. Um, Let's him keep all the money, and lets him keep the sea source alive, right? And just the simple fact that it could be Archer, and I can't deal with it yet. Right? All right, so I have a data sucker here. I'm getting data sucker tokens for these free HQ runs, thanks to Corroder, Ice Wall, Bad Pub. Ooh, all right, how's the takeover? Yes. I think he wasn't playing that because he didn't want to let me have another bad publicity, which would have helped me a ton. Right, my deck loves bad pub. And I think I'm forgetting some data sucker tokens. But do I really need them? Do I really need them? I don't think I actually ever use one of them. At least it was free to install. Well, it cost, I wasted a click on it, maybe. More ice on that remote. Wow. I'm afraid to run that remote. But there's nothing in there, so I don't have to run that. Alright, there's a sea source for sure right there. So he's got it now if he didn't have it before. I'm so good about remembering data sucker tokens when I'm watching someone else play, and I'm so bad about remembering them when I'm playing. I've remembered at least two. Alright, we got another clone ship, yes. That's basically like installing every program in my heap all at once. Oh, I remembered a data sucker token, look at that. Scorched Earth again, since it's signed. I think I'm seeing the same Scorch over and over again. I see Roto Turret in there. I see a Beanstalk in there. So right now I'm, I'm kind of in command. I just can't run R&D because Archer, and I gotta get more monies um, to be able to run through an Archer or scavenge my fem over there. And not worried about Scorch really, because I got my Plasgree. So I'm sort of in control here, but I'm only running HQ because it's free. How can I resist? And it's risk free. And he hasn't installed anything in a remote, right? That's that's really what it is. is. He hasn't installed anything in the remote, so I don't have to run it. I don't have to try to do anything. I can just, if he's drawing agendas, they're in his hand. So, and if not, they're still in R&D, which means I can wait. Uh, not in any hurry. Not in any hurry at all. Oh, now I might be in a hurry. Okay, so here comes the power grid overload. He's been stockpiling this money. Uh, thanks to government contracts and whatnot. So, we're both going to spend some time doing math. It's pretty clear 
he wants to destroy my plasticine. So I'm gonna lose. He's gonna gonna figure it out. He figures it out correctly. I'm gonna lose plasticine. At least it cost him a ton of money, but it didn't cost him enough money. He still has enough to res Archer, I think. At the end of it, possibly. And this is the real trick, right? I took that brain damage via stim hack. So I've only got four cards in my hand. At most, at the end of a turn. If I lose my Plaskreet, the Sea Source Double Scorch is on again. It is back in business. So, even if I can build up money to deal with Archer, I need to be able to spend the money on Archer. And, after spending the money on Archer, still have enough money to not get Sea Sourced. So now that the Plaskreet is gone, my days of offensive aggression running have come to a close. I am now looking to build up a huge pile of money <laughs> so that um, you know I can't be sea sourced because basically I can't make a I can't run. I cannot make a successful run or I lose the game, right? All right so this is an R&D interface, but I can make a successful run now. And why can I? Right? I have this tiny window to make a successful run because. He, he just spent all his money on the power grid overload. And he doesn't have enough money for the sea source double scorch. So I'm going to check R&D with my R&D interface. Nothing and nothing. Okay. So he's got seven and I have four. He cannot sea source double scorch me. Because it would cost six credits to do double scorch. And sea source costs a lot more than one. I think he used the government contracts and installed the card. Yeah, the other reason I wasn't afraid to run that R&D, if you didn't notice, was that uh, I scavenged my femme over onto that ice. And he replaced the ice. So, okay. Bring out my magnum opus. And I'm going to start... Uh, clicking on it. Why did I get Magnum Opus? Well, it's late game. Freelance is no longer a way to get money, right? I've got the mem chip, and I need to have enough money that he can't see source me. I need to take eight a few times. Yep, I have enough memory. Oh, he's icing up R&D now, and he's taking money with government contracts. So, this is trouble, right? It's even if I take eight, it's it's kind of hard for me to get ahead of him. Um, in the money's game, uh, another hostile takeover. So now it's even harder for me to get ahead of him in the money's game. But I've got a second bad pub, which is nice. Uh, the other thing is he now has five points, right? And I have three. So there's no four point agendas in the game. So even if I steal one agenda. I don't win the game. So any agenda he installs in the remote, right? If it's a two-point agenda, which most are. Okay, so I run R&D. I had enough credits there to deal with uh, an archer, which is why I was had no problem running. He res an enigma. Oh, of course. I don't have a code gate breaker. Well, <laughs> well, I'm gonna test run a yard. Yeah, I was happy to run there because I had enough money to um, deal with an archer. <laughs> and probably not get, you know, if I had spent too much money, if there was an archer, he would have had to sacrifice a point, right? Bringing him from five down to four, which would have put him back into two agenda territory. Well, still one agenda territory, but it had to be a three-pointer. Right, this he's in Atlas territory. He can install an unadvanced card, which could be a snare, but it could be an Atlas, 
and he could win the game off it. So look at this. Hedge fund, government contracts. That's more. That's nine credits in one go, thanks to Wayland. That's more than I can make by taking eight. So what happened there is I test ran the Yog. I didn't use it because I didn't want to get sea source because after doing the test run and whatnot, I spent too many credits. I drew a card, then the Yog went on top of the deck. The card I drew out from under the Yog was the Gordian Blade. So I'm like, well, I'll just install this. It's cheaper to install. And I have two bad pub. That, that'll take care of that Yog, right? That Enigma. All right, so... Yeah. Plus, you never know who's got a toll booth. Okay. Now there's a card in a remote. That spells trouble, right? He could win off that. If that's an Atlas, game over. Unless I take it. But if I take it, I don't have a Plaskery. So, and I have the brain damage. So even if I take it, I could just lose the game. I got to assume he's got Sea Source Double Scourge. Even though all I've seen in HQ is a Scourge. I think this is the turn where I actually I got nervous and cheated, right? See, I just took four credits. That should have been my first two clicks. But I didn't move the click counter. See that? So I still, I get confused and I'm nervous because he just installed the card. And I'm like one away from losing here. This could be the last turn. So I think that click one is quality time. That was actually click three, right? And the quality time brings up a plastic. So that's all legit now, right? That was click four. But now I'm going to take two more clicks that I should not have, right? In the end, it was somewhat inconsequential. I shouldn't have done it, um, you know, but I, I honestly did think that I had, did, had the two because I did not use my click counters. Always use click counters and remember to use them, right? I, I didn't move them when I took the four credits. I do have a lot of credits. Those four, how meaningful are they? Mm, I don't think they're meaningful right now. He has, what, 15 or maybe 23? 18 or 23 credits. I can't tell how many fives he has there. And I've got 10, 13, but I should have nine. You know, it's, it's a little bit close. Um, yeah. So... Click number five. I'm gonna infiltrate. Oof! Am I never have? Am I have never been happier to see Jackson Howard? That means he cannot win this turn, right? Okay. So what did I get with these two cheating clicks? Well, you can either think the two cheating clicks got me the four credits, or the two cheating clicks got me an infiltrate, which all it really did was put my mind at ease, and a levy. Right. So, if you consider the four credit advantage, you know, where the first two clicks I stole, not really the biggest deal at this point. The infiltration, all it did was put my mind at ease. It didn't actually affect the game, right? Would I have done something different? I don't know. And the levy on this turn, well, that could be, that could be consequential, right? The levy this turn versus next turn. But yeah, now that I have another Plascrete, right? As long as I keep four cards in my hand, I am not afraid of the Sea Double Scorch anymore. But there was a snare earlier in the game. So this, the last click run could still be a killer because that snare brings your hand down for me to one, to one or two. And then you have a tag. And if it's the last click, even if it's the second to last click, well, the second to last click, okay. So you get snared and tagged on the second to last click. If you don't remove the tag and draw two cards to go back to four, you have a tag, a triple score. If you remove the tag and draw one, well, you can now get double Scorch, because one Scorch kills the Plascrete, the other Scorch kills you, because you're now below four cards. So you got to watch out for those snares on click three or four, even if you have one Plascrete. 
click two. You can no, even click two if you hit the snare. So what do you do? You draw, draw, and remove the tag. But I have a brain damage, <laughs> so my hand's only going to be at four. So yeah, it's 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 kind of a tough situation with snare. And right, so now we have uh, another card in the remote. And I don't want to get Seasaurs Scorched, but I have a Plaskrete now. So as long as I keep four cards in my hand, I am feeling good about it. Right. As long as it's not Snare. So watch what happens here. I'm going to... Quality time, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna freelance. I'm trying to get money uh, faster than I get money with Magnum Opus. And actually, that wasn't the best deal. You think, oh, well, two clicks, six credits. Well, no, that was two clicks, three credits, because I spent three on the quality time. Um, And now I'm going to scavenge, right, the femme over to the possible archer, and I'm going to run. Oh, shit. This is the enigma, which I forgot I couldn't deal with. <laughs> but wait. But wait. Uh, this is my last click. Uh, well, no, I could deal with the enigma. I have the Gordian Blade, but I just realized that by playing the scavenge, I brought myself down to three cards in hand opening up the sea source double scorch which is why I allow the run to end and do not continue I actually wasn't thinking about the snare possibility <laughs> which I probably should have and that was the last click too but yeah uh, I wasted a click on that run so that makes up for one of the clicks I stole I guess right I ran inconsequentially. And well, if that thing in the remote is an atlas, he wins. Well, he replaced it and advanced it twice. So now, like, I was nervous last turn he was going to win, which is why I was thinking about running R&D, and I lucked out. It wasn't an atlas. He didn't just win. Now he installed advanced advanced. I haven't seen any advanceable cards in his deck, so I just got a last ditch run R and D. No matter what. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Four points. Game over. Holy sh and the snare was next! The snare was next! Oh and he was gonna win! Oh Holy crap, that just comes out of nowhere. Last ditch. Run R&D, because I know I'm going to lose next turn, either by Scorch or by Agenda, right? It's it's one or the other. Can't really run that remote. The Archer will kill me, probably. Run R&D, because I know I can get in. R&D interface happens. Four points. GG. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I cheated a little bit, but look, I have 11 credits still on the table. Those four credits... It uh, didn't really mean anything uh, in the end, uh, I guess, probably. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, what a good game. That's how you avoid a Scorch, people, right? Draw cards to find more Plaskreets. Keep cards in your hand, right? And you see the most important thing to learn was that one wise run where I was about to make a successful run, but because I had played Scavenge, I had gone down to three in hand instead of four. So I did not continue to break that enigma that I could have easily broken. And seen two cards in R&D. I did not do it. Right? Who, you know, that's, I made a mistake on that. I lost a click. So it was already a mistake to spend the click on that run. But it was an un, I fixed the mistake. I would have lost the game there had I continued.